There we go. I'll be there shortly. For now, I'm a ghost. <laughs> I, um, I have this little wireless mouse that I have so that I can control the computer from this side of it when doing these baking streams. Is that cookie dough? Um, but clearly, uh, it's, it's not, like, it, it works when it's on a mouse pad, but I didn't think to put one in here, and I was, like, trying to, like, use it on myself for, like, my counter, or, like, I have some tortillas. Um, no dice. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, welcome to my kitchen, everybody. Good morning, happy Saturday, welcome to the weekend. Today we are crafting, well, trying to craft a triple berry pie. This is not a Warcraft cookbook recipe. None of this is from the Warcraft cookbook, and indeed I haven't shared this recipe because I don't know if this is going to work. I've kind of pieced it together from a couple of different recipes online, and I'm sure that I'm going to blaspheme it further as we actually progress. But the basic gist of it is that we're going to make some pastry, we're going to make some pie dough, uh, we're going to chill the pie dough while we figure out the filling, and then we'll, we've got, we've got a little pie dish over here, and then we can, you know, bake a pie. Uh, the primary ingredients, we have berries, I have said triple berry, and indeed I think that whoever originally made the first part of this recipe, um, I just did a real bad Photoshop job on this piece of paper to like throw two ingredient lists on it, um, is using the same Costco blend as me. However, they are using a deep dish pie pan, and while I tried to buy a deep dish pie pan, because for a while I was baking pies in like a tart pan, and then I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna buy an actual pie plate, and I managed to mess it up again. <laughs> and this one I'm pretty sure is just the standard or inch and a quarter deep, inch and a quarter depth pie plate. Oh God, oh boy, I gotta wash that. There's a bug in that. That's unpleasant. Well, there, well you were a bug once. You're not a bug anymore. Gross, I should probably clean that cupboard. Anyways, hmm. um, let's get some dishes out of the way so I can wash that. And then, um, and then well, well, we'll get started. We're gonna do the pastry first because it needs to chill while we're figuring out the rest of it. Um, I think I'm going to need to do some improvising with the amount of the filling because it calls for a deep dish pie plate and I don't have that. And it also wants me to use seven cups of fruit. And I don't think I have that much either. Um, I've been eating some of it. <laughs> it was a big bag from Costco, but then I put it on my oatmeal. So uh, I don't know if I have that much and I probably won't need that much. So I'm gonna just kind of wing the filling down by reducing the berries and the sugar. And then I'm gonna keep the cornstarch roughly the same. I might tone it down a little bit, but if I'm messing with the proportions, I know that the thing that is at risk there is the, the gelatinousness, the thickness, the viscosity, if you will, of the, of the pie crust. And if I'm going to mess that up, I would rather it be too thick and vaguely jelly-like than an absolute puddle because all of my pies turn into puddles and that's just no good. Let's see here. Uh, even the bug wants pie. You guys are being remarkably kind about the fact that I have a dead bug shell in my pie plate, which is pretty gross. I'm going to fix that. Um, hang on just one moment. Let's see here. A little fish mug. Rest of the morning coffee. Do this with oat milk is the new thing that I've been putting in coffee anyways. I feel like there should have been more coffee left. Oh well. Do some of that. And then like here. Here. So I thought ahead today and I put the butter that we're gonna use in the freezer. I didn't do it like overnight or anything because I don't know, something about frozen butter just sounds hazardous, especially because I'm going to be grating it. But the, um, maybe that was the end of my thought. Oh, Ooh. sometimes the dog likes to stand right in front of you and then he's surprised when you continue walking. <laughs> he likes to get underfoot. Okay, so um, today's shortening, today's crust is going to involve shortening because I have found that a half vegetable shortening, half butter crust has performed the best for me. I really struggled with pie crust because I kept trying to make full butter ones and I'm just not that talented and that's okay. So we're gonna go half and half. 
I'm going to be using uh, one and a half sticks of butter, third of a cup of, of shortening, sugar, salt, flour. I think, so I could go either way in the flour. I know typically the choice is to use um, all purpose flour, which is in short supply these days. And I did manage to get a bag of it, but I'm kind of saving it for things that will be absolutely trash with, with whole wheat flour because whole wheat flour is what I have in here. And I feel like a berry pie with a whole wheat crust isn't the worst thing in the world. It might not be as soft, but like, it'll be fine. So I think I'm gonna mess with that um, so that I can preserve my all-purpose stockpile for, well, I don't know, it's not like I'm a pastry chef. Also, I have a pie shield. No more, no more weird foil crunching. Um, this thing is for one purpose only. And also it locks me into using this pie dish. And also it doesn't really fit properly over top of the pie dish. It balances on it. So it's gonna kind of crimp the border. But again, not a pastry chef. Nobody has to buy this, it's fine. Oh yeah, we're washing this. Let's do some dishes. <laughs> is oat milk significantly different than almond milk? I mean, it's made from oats instead of almonds, although I imagine you gathered gather that. Um, oat milk in my experience, and I will say that I haven't had a lot of almond milk, so I'm not that familiar with that, but oat milk tends to be, you can get it just straight and plain oat milk, which is just kind of like oat juice, and it's pretty watery and doesn't really taste like much, but um, you can also buy extra creamy versions, and those tend to be, they have um, vegetable oil added to them to make them thicker and creamier, and I found that that, the creamy ones work really well in coffee because there's actually... Well, actually, I don't know why, but I'm assuming there's something about having the extra fat in it to bind to whatever it is I'm trying to mask in the coffee that makes it work better because the pure water ones are just like water. Um, and while I'm sure they're very healthy, I don't know, it's fine. And you can, you can buy oat milk in varying degrees of creaminess. I mean, maybe they do that to almond milk too, I don't know. They just don't have a ton of natural oil to them. Oats, I don't think. Uh, I also read somewhere that it costs, it takes much less water and resources to raise oats to create oat milk out of, making it a little bit more long-term sustainable. Uh, work much better in coffee. Wife and I both agree, you are the most approachable, likable wow YouTuber. Oh, shucks. I, I would say I try, but I don't know if that's true. Um, milk's super easy to make at home. Did it once for a medieval Europe class, end of semester party. Fancy. Good morning, Hazel. Good morning, Thunderbird, how you doing? All right, we've successfully evicted poor um, lost bug skeleton from that pie plate, and I've made a note to, you know, fix that cover today. Maybe all of them, although I do have some stuff on my list already. So I should get started on this pastry. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to mix together the flour, flour, salt, a little bit of sugar in a bowl, um, three cups flour, teaspoon of salt, tablespoon of sugar, and then I'm going to grate in with a cheese grater, like a wide, a wide cut cheese grater, um, my butter, and then add in the shortening, and I'm just gonna mix it together with my hands. I'll chill my hands or something, um, and then we'll re-chill it. The butter has been in the freezer, so that's gonna help. The key here is for me to not accidentally grate my hands and get demonetized when this eventually goes to YouTube. Goodbye, bug friend. <laughs> Have the same gloves as you, except blue. Yeah, I'm about ready to replace these. I find that I can use them. I guess I just try to use them for too long. I expect far too much from my disposable dish gloves. I just want to have one pair that I use forever, even though that's gross. But eventually they always get like um, tears in the fingertips somehow. Or maybe I'm just like touching pokey things. That also sounds true. But they, they start leaking after a while. Um, so I just buy them in like big packs. <laughs> you can't, uh, I don't know. I, I always used to find doing dishes, particularly when there was like, food, leftover food that was like wet with dishwater to be really gross. So I didn't want to do dishes when I was a kid. And then when I grew up, I realized that I'm allowed to buy and wear gloves. And that makes it less gross because then I don't have to touch it. And then I can still get my dishes done and everybody's fine. Okay. Measuring flour, salt, sugar into a bowl. Let's get a bowl. Uh, let's wash hands. Go spog, that sounds cute. How long did it take you to get the Brutosaur? So I bought my Brutosaur like three weeks into patch 8.2. So it took me probably about a year, I think roughly a calendar year to scrape together the, the gold to buy it. However, at least a third, if not more of that gold happened in the last two, three weeks during the launch of patch 8.2. I went very hard during the 8.2 launch. Up until that point, I'd just been kind of living my life and trying different things. But right in the beginning of a patch is usually a very fruitful time to be, to be making gold. 
Uh, we have a gift sub from JTEC, thank you very much. Also, Caladrius had a 10 month resub. How nice you're baking a pie to celebrate my 10 month subversary. Happy subversary. I'm getting a bowl. I, 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 I worry sometimes that these streams are going to be increasingly a measure of um, how scattered I'm becoming over the years and people will one day use them as a case study to show how people slowly descend into madness and like lose their short-term memory and stuff. <laughs> I'm imagining research papers being like the effect on, of streaming on formerly sane people. <laughs> Here is this woman that did actually graduate high school, struggles for 45 seconds to remember what she professed to do about 46 seconds ago. Flour. Um, I could weigh these ingredients, but I'm not going to because I don't care that much. Um, I thought I cared once upon a time. Ooh, a piece of rice. How'd that happen? Oh, I know how that happened. I use this, uh, I store this colander on top of my, on top of my mixing bowls and I also use it to rinse my rice. Whenever I'm making sushi, because I like to rinse the extra starch off it, but <laughs> then some of it gets stuck and then it ends up in my bowls. At least it's not a bug. All right, three cups. Um, we're using whole wheat uh, to see how that goes. <laughs> Why not? I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, I saw a lot of recipes when I was around looking around for berry pie recipes. I saw a lot of recipes for blueberry pies. And I do have blueberries, although I eat those every day, um, so I don't think I have enough of them to make a pie with. But I was trying to think, have I had a blueberry pie? And then I, w and then I got to thinking, what if, um, so I have these basil plants, I have these fresh basil plants outside. Uh, Trex Framex, thanks for the two-month reset. And I was talking yesterday about how I've recently discovered that the prime time to harvest your basil is in the morning so that it, it tastes better. Um, if you leave it until evening and then pick it right before dinner time, it won't taste as good. Uh, so then I got to thinking, there's this donut shop in Portland. I promise this is all going to come together eventually. <laughs> donut shop in Portland um, that does a blueberry bourbon basil flavored donut. It's uh, Blue Star Donuts, very good. If you're ever touristing around Portland and people are like, you got to try the donuts and they want you to go to Voodoo Donuts, you can do that. You know, Voodoo Donuts is fun, but you also have to try Blue Star because they're delightful. Teaspoon of salt, tablespoon of sugar. Um, they do a blueberry bourbon basil donut, which is really good. That's kind of their thing is they mix herbs with like sweet fruits. They also have a raspberry rosemary but buttermilk one that's really good. And I'm like, what if I did a, a bourbon, a blueberry, what, no. What if I did a blueberry basil pie? So I, I'm not doing that today because I don't have enough blueberries. And also I feel like with fresh basil and no recipe, I would somehow manage to make some kind of really weird, also don't measure over your bowl, don't be me. Um, really weird kind of like <laughs> sweet herb pie that's not a thing. I feel like I would just way overdo the basil and then end up with something that's inedible. And we just finished those brownies off, so I need to make dessert that we can eat. Sugar. Tablespoon. There we go. So I'm going to... Ooh, you know what I should do is I should start chilling my water. So it wants me to take about a half a cup of ice water, maybe a little bit more. So I'm just gonna take a measuring cup. I'm gonna add a little more than half a cup. We'll do like three quarters of a cup or so. And I'm just gonna put this in the freezer while I'm grating my butter so that this can chill a little bit. If I'd been thinking ahead, I would have done it earlier, but whatever. <laughs> uh, we're probably not gonna use all of it. We just need enough for it to come together. But I always, always need like way more water than the world wants me to use, so. Although that problem is somewhat mitigated by, somewhat mitigated by um, shortening. Shortening helps the dough become dough. Okay, I'm going to mix together my flour situation. Uh, one thing that I do want to note that I can't because this mouse doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, Sigal, thanks for the brand new sub. Um, I plugged in my extra webcam, the one that had died on me recently, um, to see if it would work today. And I did it like after the stream started because I ran out of time. And I don't know if it works and I can't tell right now. So maybe, maybe once we're waiting for something to chill or bake or cook or something, then I'll go start messing with that. Uh, but I'll, I'll see if I can get a close up cam by the time we get to latticing pie crust. I thought about braiding it yesterday, but I think I've since decided that that was the talk of a crazy woman that wasn't about to have to immediately do it. And also latticing is just very fun. There's something very like cute and classic about a latticed pie top. All right. There's our flour. Time to grate one and a half, st 
sticks of butter. What was I saying? There's something very satisfying about having my recipe printed out on a piece of paper like it's 2004. Also, whenever I try to put recipes on screens, I'll usually have them on like my iPad or my phone or something, and they always have screen auto off. And I'm too lazy to go disable that while I'm working. So I have to like unlock the phone at like every 45 seconds to check something, and this is just much easier. Mm, what was I looking for? Oh yeah, how much butter am I doing? One and a half sticks of butter. Okay, so I have two sticks of butter in the freezer. I'll chop one in half. Here, I'll grab a cutting board, some kind of, I was gonna say professional, but that's pushing a little bit far. Okay, here we go. Now, one of these went in later than the other one, so I wanna chop the less hard one. Right, so, taking a half a stick there. The rest of this can probably just go back in the fridge. And then I'm going to use said cheese grater to grate this butter fairly carefully into my big bowl of flour. Uh, making sure this doesn't have anybody living in there. <laughs> it seems fine. Or, you know, cheese. Braiding's very time consuming. Blue Star Voodoo and Salt and Straw in LA. Now, God bless Portland. Salt and Straw is some good stuff. We don't do ice cream very much, and it's kind of um, like if you're just going to go get an ice cream cone from there, you better be prepared to wait in line. Uh, I, I don't know what the world's going to be like after this, but back in the day before coronavirus, you had to be prepared to wait in line for that stuff. But it's like so good. Uh, impressed you're giving up Animal Crossing time to bake. I was doing WoW dailies this morning. I, hmm, I got my Shadow Barb drone. He is beautiful. His name is still Reginald in my heart. Um, I'm vaguely concerned about the way that the saddle has like bloodily pierced through. Uh, so I'm gonna keep, oh, you know what? If my fingers are dusted with flour, that's gonna stop this butter from being so slippery. I was wondering how I was gonna stop the butter from just like cartoon uh, sliding out of my hands, but as long as everything's a little coated with butter, or with flour rather, and it's where it's going anyways, I'm periodically just kind of mixing my shavings in so I don't end up with one gigantic clump of butter shavings. But this way I find I get fairly even flakes of butter for the pastry without having to handle it too much. Um, especially because I don't have a pastry blender, and even when I have had pastry blenders in the past, they're like, <laughs> I don't know, they're hard to use for me. They're, you have to, you're pushing through a very solid object, especially if your butter's really cold. And sometimes it's just not, it just doesn't work out. So being a little careful with the last little nub. Yep, that's why. And then we're going for the second stick. Prefer having a printed recipe over having it on a device. Phone likes to rest, or reset where I am on the page, constantly scrolling back to the recipe. One thing I've often thought about, often it's a stretch, one thing I've thought about once or twice before for like a one day future dream kitchen would be having a monitor mounted somewhere in the kitchen that is just connected to like a little baby computer, like an apple pie or a Mac mini or something, um, with just like a little mouse and keyboard so that I could pull up, you know, my, my digital recipes and documents and look stuff up on the web or like put on YouTube videos without having to like move a monitor around or like get flour all over the laptop or stuff like that. Like a dedicated, just a little bitty baby kitchen one. But you would need to find a good place to put the monitor. Um, and it still sounds like a good idea to me. All right, here we go. Uh, we're also going to be adding, uh, shortening. My, the heat in here is working against me. I should have opened more windows last night. It's cold and, well not cold, it's like 55 degrees and raining outside in Portland here today. Um, but it was sunny and warm last yesterday afternoon and I forgot to like air out the house or the apartment in the evening. So it's still pretty, it's like 78 degrees in here. So I'm, I'm working up a very mild butter grating sweat for lack of better words. So we're gonna get through this, then we're gonna add our shortening, and then we're gonna start sprinkling in water little bits of a time until it comes together into a shaggy mass. Any excuse to say the words shaggy mass together. And then uh, we're gonna split it into two discs, wrap them in plastic, slap them in the fridge, and start worrying about how on earth we're gonna make our filling. Uh, also, how we're gonna season it. The one thing this recipe is missing, they have lemon juice and sugar and berries um, as part of the filling and then they thicken it with cornstarch, which is all fine. But they haven't added any like 
I don't know, cinnamon or vanilla or like you could get fancy with a little rosemary or basil or something. I don't know. There's nothing in there. And I feel like I'm going to taste it because there's already three types of berries. So we don't want to get too crazy. We don't want to make like everything soup. <laughs> I don't know if you ever tried to make that as a kid. I had um, once, once upon a time, young child Hazel on a Canadian estate with her extended family. The cousins were all playing a game where we would get a big mixing bowl and then put as many different things as we could in it and then dare each other to, to eat and or drink it. And it was always just like popcorn and then pop, like soda, like 7-Up, and then just like half the spice rack. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm the one that ate it because I was the youngest. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm the one who ended up eating that. Okay. So I have my butter grated into my flour. It looks like nothing. That's fine. And I need a third of a cup of vegetable shortening. It specifies very cold vegetable shortening, but you know, it's in the fridge, so we've done our best. Under the cabinet, that way you can hide it. Yeah, but you also want to be able to see it. <laughs> I suppose if it was on some kind of articulating arm that you can like whoosh out from under the cabinet. I imagine that if you're well off enough to be building computers into your kitchen with extra monitors, you probably have a big enough kitchen to just have a spot to put it. I don't know that that many, I mean, I guess there's, there's rich people with micro kitchens. What am I doing? Um, shortening. Okay. Although there's a lot of people that have really nice kitchens that never cook in them. So maybe they just haven't thought about it. Oh boy. All right. Third of a cup. I know that's the blue one because I use that one all the time. That's my favorite size of measuring cup. I use it for oats. I use it for pasta. I use it for blueberries. I have third of a cup of like so many things. So the problem with the iPad is that, um, and honestly, I guess I could. I don't really like using them with like flowery, dirty hands. I feel like you can gum up the, stream, the screen pretty fast. And even if you're not gonna hurt the iPad and you can clean it off later, it's still annoying like in the process of it. Um, and then it's not that big of a screen. And then um, you gotta, the bat, I mean, I guess you, if, you, if it was a dedicated kitchen iPad, you could just have the it set to never sleep and then have it permanently connected to power. That would work. But I, I feel like if you're gonna go that far, you may as well just get yourself a proper monitor. That's like roughly a third of a cup. There's a gap there, but it goes a little over on top and it's fine. Okay. Oh, this was ill-advised. Also didn't even work. All right, we're just gonna use hands. Vegetable shortening. Get in there. And then I'm gonna mix that in with my hands real quick, trying not to get anything too warm. It's much mushier than butter, which I find makes the dough bind better. People say it gives the dough a blander flavor. It's not as flavorful as butter, but I don't, I, I don't know that the flavor of the butter is ever what I'm super excited for about a pie crust. Like obviously you don't want it to taste like nothing. Sometimes you'll get a pie from a grocery store or something like that and it just tastes like absolute, uh, you know, like a pretend piece of food, <laughs> like it's fake, but uh, that's about it. Uh, I feel like there's a middle ground. Hi, Hazel and Chester. Phoenix, how you doing? Frame is destroying my image of Hazel. She's too tall for a gnome. I am five foot 10 inches tall, or 178 centimeters for you metric users, which is not gigantic. It's just tall enough that if I put on like a good pair of heels, I will be taller than most people in a race. Raspberry Pi with a little touch screen would probably work out. Yeah, something like that. That'd be kind of fun. I've never messed with a Raspberry Pi, but they look like fun. Although maybe it's one of those things that only looks fun before you start to mess with it and then you realize I'm over my head. Okay, cold water. We are going to be adding in cold water and then mixing it together. I'm gonna to use a wooden spoon for this step, I think. I'm gonna stop getting my hands in there because I don't wanna warm it up any more than it already is. We have our slightly chilled, eh, coldish water. So let's just kind of add, I'm gonna start with like a good chunk of it and then stir it together and we'll see if we can get a good shaggy mass going. <sighs> Maybe later on stream we can make some tea. I had my coffee this morning, but I also didn't sleep great. I've been up for a while and I don't know. I had this, like I, I got up a couple hours earlier than usual and then I was gonna stay in bed and read for a while. And I did stay in bed and just read for a while, but then the dog noticed I was awake and he was like, you, <laughs> you get up and take me out now. So I got up pretty early and went and took him for the walk. And then when I got home, it was still like, 
so many things in my life don't happen until 8 a.m. Like I usually want to have a little bit of time in the mornings. I like to take a little time with my breakfast and then either play some WoW or some Animal Crossing or whatever and then, you know, get dressed and move on with my day. But uh, in WoW, daily quests don't reset until 8 a.m. and in Animal Crossing, the shop doesn't open until 8 a.m. So if I get home at like quarter after seven, um, I, I can make breakfast and that takes 15, 20 minutes. And then I'm like, well, oh, um, let's do a little more. Maybe I will need to get my hands in here. I think, I feel like I need more of a squishing motion. Right now I've got more of a stirring motion and I need to make these things form a dough and I don't want any like pockets of moisture to not be together. That's getting there. Mm, almost. I feel like maybe it needs just a little tiny bit more. And by that, I mean like that much. All right, that'll definitely be enough. <laughs> I know supposedly adding too much water to a pastry crust will make it tough, but so will overworking it because you're trying desperately to make it come together without adding too much water. And I've lived that life before. Uh, so in my opinion, this is the lesser of two evils. All right, that's close enough. That's still pretty dry feeling, but it'll, it'll figure its life out, especially as the flour, what do you call it, autolyzes, absorbs, absorbs water. Where do you get the apron? Etsy. Um, Etsy a long time ago. The shop, the printer, uh, still around, but no longer sells um, directly to the public. They do business stuff these days. Uh, Valder, Valder Fuchs. I am very sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that, but thank you very much for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Also, Howling FPS, thanks for the 10 month reset. <sighs> More like dealing with raspberry pies than raspberry pie with a knee. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just, I'm mostly, I'm not great at pie, and I've made quite a few very mediocre pies, but I'm determined to continue making mediocre pies until I am making pies that I'm happy with, and then I'm going to keep making those ones, because I just really like pie. It's superior to cake, in my opinion. Um, I think I just prefer pastry. Cake feels like it could have been bread, and then it tried to get all fancy, and nobody cared. It's just, it's only okay. It's, I don't hate it. All right, so here's about half of it make a disc or just a lump is fine a little dry still putting that onto some plastic wrap oh it smells good i feel like the whole wheat flour kind of underrated i feel like people usually only put it in stuff when they're making like a whole wheat specific bread i guess i, I have no idea how many people use whole wheat flour in their own kitchens but i never bought it on purpose before i only bought it because the um, pandemic has made it incredibly difficult to buy certain baking supplies but everything that I've used it in, I've used it in some cookies, I've used it in, maybe it was just cookies, but they were really good. <laughs> I, I used it in some chocolate chip cookies and I felt like the kind of nuttiness of the whole wheat flour really added to the flavor profile. All right, so there's one thing of dough. It's still pretty dry in there, but if I really can't get it to work later, then I will just get my hands a little wet and that'll be, that'll work. Um, The other half in here and then we'll clean up a little bit and start worrying about our filling although filling's not doesn't need to happen right away we can certainly get it started um, it's just that the dough is going to need to chill and then I might par bake it or blind bake it or whatever people call that the recipe doesn't call for it but I this is gonna be a pretty wet pie and I think that it can't, it usually doesn't hurt to just give it like an extra 10 minutes at a lower temperature first, just to get the bottom started. Um, I find that's usually fine. <sighs> Plus otherwise, when am I ever gonna whip out my baking beans? <laughs> or pie weights or whatever you call them. I have the little ceramic ones and if I paid for them, I may as well use them. All right. Oh, I wonder if I should put those in the freezer because I may not get a whole half hour to chill them. Well, I may not choose to chill them for a whole half hour. We'll see. They'll chill faster in the freezer. They're not gonna freeze. We just want them to be cold. I'm gonna, I'm gonna whack them in the freezer. I feel like the fridge is for people that might forget things and I never forget anything. I'm just like really smart that way. Uh, cake is overrated. I don't wanna be like branded forever as a cake hater. I've had many delightful cakes and I think especially when cake gets kind of fancy and starts adding extra sauces and fillings and you know, crunchy stuff on top. There's one that my mother makes that has like score bars chopped up and put over top of the, of the topping. Those can be very nice. I just, you know, there's something about pastry. Pie is far more versatile. 
Ice cream cake cheesecake. Ooh, you have a point, actually. I wouldn't really classify those as cakes. I understand that they have the word cake in the name, but they don't, they, they have such a more delightful texture going on. They're much more rich. Uh, also, I will fight. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to express my love for tiramisu. And I don't know how I came to start saying it violently. Who am I going to fight for tiramisu? Who is coming out here being like, I'll fight you because I think tiramisu sucks? Nobody thinks that. I mean, if they think that, they're probably not like <laughs> ready to fight over it. Also, who am I going to fight? OK, uh, I'm going to do some dishes. And while I'm doing dishes, I should be close enough to my monitor to actually read chat. My eyes um, are not what they used to be. And even with my glasses, I need to get about this close before I can see what you guys are talking about. More of a savory flavor kind of gal anyways. If I'm going to eat a pie, I want it to be a meat pie or cheese and onion pie, something like that. One thing I've never really messed with is like vegetarian shepherd's pies. Like I've seen, I've seen a lot of savory pies that use meat. I guess I've never tried a cheese and onion pie. Um, and as a pescatarian, I guess there's also fish pies, although that's not a very common thing over here. So I, I've never, I've never had any fish pie. I guess I put smoked salmon in a quiche and that's about as close as I've gotten. But I do enjoy savory stuff. That'd be good. Uh, you might fight someone for the last piece of tiramisu. Yeah, but then, like, if they also want it, then I empathize because I want tiramisu too. So I, we, should, we should make peace and split it. Or I can just let them have it and then resolve to solve my own tiramisu want later. <laughs> I don't like tiramisu because I don't like the flavor more for you. I'll fight you because I don't like tiramisu. I actually don't like it, only if I'm wrestling. I think my thumbs might have more reach than yours. Maybe not, but I have pretty spidery hands. Although they have no strength, so you probably win. That's for later. What am I doing? <laughs> Dishes? Don't like coffee, so I won't eat the tiramisu. What do you put in a, in a veggie shepherd's pie? That's what I'm asking. I imagine you would, you would still get the mashed potato. And then I'm thinking like a mushroom gravy. And then I'm thinking like, you know, you want it to, you know, you get like some sweet potatoes maybe because I put those in everything. <laughs> I'd probably just go for my standard go-to like sweet potatoes, balsamic, glazed, caramelized onions. Uh, get some mushrooms in there, throw some mashed potato on top, uh, spice it up real good and call it a pie. Lentils would be good too. I'm, I'm thinking of things that we can, that um, don't, don't uh, transgress over any allergy boundaries around here. Uh, don't mess with the girl in the alliance instrument, some kind of large bean. Yeah, he can't eat, he can't do beans, he can't do peas, cannot do lentils, so those would be no good for me. But if you were making one at home for yourself, that would totally be fine. That would be pretty good, I think. I bought, I need to make curry again. I have, um, <laughs> I haven't been great with my meal prep lately. I was on before, quarantine started, I was on such a good, a good run of like meal prepping every week. And then I had like these little, I was doing these rice bowls with like lots of veggies and lots of beans and like high fiber foods. And it was good. And I was feeling really good. And then um, I got stressed out and started staying home and only grocery shopping every other week and started stress eating. And then now I'm getting the fruits and vegetables back in, but basically in the form of saying, okay, it's lunchtime. I'm going to have an apple and some carrots and then just like some carbs of some kind, like some toast or a sandwich or like some noodles or whatever. And it's not the same. I think I, I, I had like this, um, this like lentil, spicy lentil curry that I put on rice with like a tofu thing. It was really good. Um, this one goes in here. This one goes over here. Uh, this is clean. I can make some tea with that. Uh, substitute meat with Satan. Somebody could, yeah. I think that <laughs> it's tough to do meatless foods that do not, um, do not violate, that, that won't kill my spouse. Because <laughs> uh, the soy is in a lot of things. Soy and legumes are in a lot of meat substitutes, so it's really hard for us to meal plan for things we can both eat. Uh, here in Europe, we sometimes use corn for pies, at least if it's ready-made. I've never heard of that. What is that? Uh, recently came across your YouTube, love your channel. Thanks, Kadaria. Hazel would like some baked pork tato. Maybe, maybe, if it was like good. I think the problem with, that I usually have with regular potatoes that are not sweet potatoes is often, you know, they can be like rich, but they're, they get so boring. It's just like, unless you absolutely saturate it with like butter and cream cheese and, or, or sour cream or toppings or whatever, 
I've never had potato that was not completely annihilated with dairy products, such as, you know, the cheese and the sour cream or whatever, that I really enjoyed. <laughs> I've had a potato where I've been like, well, that was food. Um, but 10 times out of 10, I feel like the sweet potato just, is just better on its own. It's either veggie or vegan, comes in many varieties. Yeah, but what is it? <laughs> but what is it? Uh, open releasing the recipe in advance is a bit too winged for that to work out. It's partially that it's winged, and then it's partially that I'm just kind of, um, I'm kind of scraping stuff together off the internet, and I don't want to recommend it until I know whether or not it's going to work out, and then after the fact, I forget. Um, and then with the WoW Cookbook stuff, those are part of the WoW Cookbook. Uh, that was food is how I describe things that are fine but not good or bad. Mm -hmm. I feel like my rice veggie bowl started to get to that point. Um, if I have, if I give myself some extra time for lunch, then I can like, you know, stir fry the tofu with like a little sesame seeds to get like a soy glaze going with like some ginger and that's really good. Um, but that takes like way too much time to just do on a Monday when I have something to get to at one o'clock. So I end up, uh, I end up just doing like soy sauce on top of a rice bowl that has just like some steamed carrots and broccoli and, and like beans and whatever. And that's fine. It's just not life changing. And I guess lunch doesn't need to be life changing. Lunch needs to be lunch. <laughs> lunch needs to be food that you eat and that hopefully is good for you. And that, you know, gets you through the rest of your day without you wanting to just like give up. Okay, this goes here. This goes back up here. These go over here. Oh, it's like an artificial meat product, like a substitute meat product. I see, I see. Mainly Horde, I guess your apron is fine, JK, I love it. This apron's held up for a really long time. It's, I feel like the, I've had this for probably four years now, maybe. Maybe more than that, four or five years. And the print on it seems good. Cut out small potatoes, roast in the oven. So sometimes I'll do that. I'll like toss some, some potato bits and then usually some other root vegetables, get some like carrots in there, get some onion in there. That's not a root vegetable, is it? Maybe it is. Um, carrots, onion, potatoes, like chopped up, tossed in like some olive oil. I add balsamic vinegar because I just like it. And then a little bit of salt and I'll roast that. And that's fine, but like, I've yet to meet an application for a potato that I would not prefer to put a sweet potato in. Good thing Mr. Nutty isn't allergic to seafood or the meals would be even harder to coordinate. Well, he can't eat shellfish, so we can't do shrimp together, we can't do crab together, um, we can't do shellfish, but regular fish is okay. Otherwise, you're right, I think we would just starve. <laughs> Rice with some flavors good. Uh, is 225 FPS overrated? Yes, probably. Um, I feel like once you get past 120, you're just doing it for the uh, memes. Uh, but maybe maybe in future years. We used to talk about how you didn't need anything over 60. And I feel like as a community, we've accepted that 120 is pretty cool. But do we really need to go over 200? I don't know. Uh, do you believe follow the whole breakfast king, lunch prince, dinner popper as far as meal proportions? Absolutely not. Um, I don't know. I don't know how valid it is. Maybe it's good. <laughs> I eat, I eat so that I'm not hungry. So I will eat breakfast and I will eat enough breakfast and a, a, a breakfast that I know will make me not be starving by like 11 a.m. So for me, that means I need some carbs, like some, um, lately I've just been doing oats, like I'll do oatmeal, but I've also done toast in the past. I need some protein, um, so oats, uh, or I used to do an egg and then fruit, a fruit or vegetable. So lately I've been doing like the oats with blueberries and then some oat milk, but then also I get some flaxseed in there, I get some chia seeds in there, and I do a pretty good amount of it. I don't get super hungry in the morning, so I don't wanna eat a ton, but I find I can kind of eat that along with my coffee. I cannot get the shortening out of this thing. I'm just gonna go in here with like some actual soap. <laughs> um, and that's fine. Lunches, I feel like I eat a little bit too much for lunch sometimes, and then that makes me kind of sleepy. I need to do a smaller lunch. But I just naturally, like, if I'm left to my own devices and not thinking about my health, I will just not eat all day and then eat a giant meal for dinner. And that's not great for me because it puts me in a giant food coma and probably not good for, like, something or other. But I definitely do think that my largest meal is probably dinner still. And I'll eat that fairly late, too. I don't snack much, though. Uh, I would take a stab at being pescatarian if my wife wasn't allergic to seafood. Yeah, we kind of, I still eat plenty of things that he can't eat. It's just, we make it very clear 
And to be fair, his allergies aren't like, he's, it's okay if it's in the house, he just can't eat it. Um, so I will have things that he can't eat and we'll either prepare a separate side for him so that we can kind of mix our dishes separately. Like I'll do a stir, like a veggie stir fry and a bunch of rice. And then I will have some shrimp with mine and then he'll have some chicken with his and that's fine. Uh, and then for lunches, we eat lunches separately typically. So that then you can kind of have whatever you want. Carbs, sleepy blood, sugar crash. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sweet potato tots. Yeah. Um, maybe not tots. Like I've never like bought frozen ones or anything, but uh, I will often, if I'm at like a fast food place that offers them, uh, sweet potato fries are um, an instant pick for me. I am really struggling to get the butter and shortening off of these dishes. I should probably focus for a second. I'm trying to multitask too much. out of the question. I wish I liked seafood because it seems like so much fun. Yeah, I like certain kinds of seafood. I'm not really one to just buy a cut of fish and then bake it and then be like, this is my baked fish. But um, we'll do, I'll put like tuna or um, imitation crab, which I guess is white fish, into sushi. And then I used to eat a lot of tuna melts. I used to do a lot of like very classic, you know, like green onion, garlic, um, herbs with tuna and then cheese on like a bun just like melted in the toaster like a very kind of after school snack kind of meal i i've made that for a long time but i, I cut back on that because i realized i was eating like a lot of tuna and it's not that it's i wasn't like going over the recommended limits but i feel like maybe maybe not that much maybe a little bit less i haven't quit tuna but i try not to go through more than like one can in a week oh man tempura crab very nice yeah, you guys are gonna make me miss sushi. We haven't been eating out. Um, we've been just cooking at home, which has been good because it's been saving us money. But, uh, and I've been making like homemade sushi at home, which is fine. It kind of scratches the itch. But I miss going out to eat or, well, getting takeout because we can't really go out into restaurants because I got the dot. Making meatballs myself, it's as if we're cooking together. Oh, breakfast, Jimmy, scrambler, bacon, coffee, oat milk. Uh, if tuna gets too much, I always go for cold turkey. I don't do poultry myself, but I imagine it's probably good. What am I doing? I have cleaned up my kitchen. Go me. Hooray. I, that is still chilling, I'm assuming. I feel a little bit cold. Uh, whenever that's ready, we'll pull it out. Whenever the filling's ready, we can pull that out, roll it, get it into the pans. For the filling, what we're going to do today, we are going to measure our individual bits because, uh, um, I don't know how much berries I really have. I guess I can kind of substitute. So I have, here's the berry situation. Let me walk you through the berry situation. Uh, Atos Coder, thank you very much for the brand new set. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. So this is the main proportion of berries. This is a three berry blend. It is from Costco. It contains raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries. If this is not enough, it looks like it should be, but if this is not enough, I can substitute. I have some extra blueberries. Um, and then I also have these whole strawberries, which are kind of a problem because they're like really big and they're completely whole and it makes it hard for them to incorporate into things because it's like two inches squared. Uh, <laughs> the berry situation. Oh man, what size pie are you going for? I am making a nine inch pie and the recipe was for a deep dish pie plate, and this is a standard depth pie plate. So I'm thinking I'm gonna like shave off some of the requested berries and then everything else in rough proportion to that um, without reducing the cornstarch too much, just so, because I don't think we're gonna need all that much filling. It must be enough for three pies. It's not completely full. Love blackberries, some Moslems used to grow where I grew up. I had a deal with my mom growing up that if I could pick enough wild blackberries to put in a pie and then she would make the pie which was a great deal <laughs> um so i would i would go out we had them in our area too so i would like go ranging around the around our property we had a pretty good sized property 
picking all the wild blackberries that grew there. And they were very, very tart, but if you just like smother them in sugar, oh no, <laughs> I've, I've smudged my recipe, it would be fine. So I guess what I'm gonna do, so they want me to simmer the berries on the stove for five to 10 minutes and, and sweeten them. And then scoop out some of the juice, add in the cornstarch, mix it back in, that all makes sense and then cook it for another two to five minutes. And then they want me to cool it for 15 minutes. So I can start the, I can definitely start the filling now. And then by the time the filling is ready to go, the, the dough should be pretty chilled. So I guess I'm just gonna get a big pot and then start putting stuff in it. And we'll, we'll see. Um, if I make too much filling and it won't all fit in the pie, then I can just save it and then put it on ice cream so it won't be wasted. Watch a movie with a kid. Uh, take care all, try to hook someone else up with a sub next stream. See you later, JTech. Have a good movie. Uh, herbalism IRL, kind of. Um, as I've discovered, herbalism IRL, when talking about picking wild blackberries, nothing more crazy, don't worry. Uh, they're very pokey, there's lots of thorns. They have very tiny little thorns, I've found. I need a big, I need a big pot. I used to scratch up my fingers pretty good doing that, but overall, overall not too bad. Ooh, I need to clean that counter. Um, the patterning on this counter is great because the counter does not look dirty from most angles, but I almost wish it was a regular one that did look dirty from angles when it was dirty because then I would know when it was dirty. Otherwise I can't see it until I'm like on a level and the light hits it. I'm gonna grab a dishcloth. I had one, but I don't know what I've done with it. <sighs> a little late, but I made it. Hi, Hazel so Leo, how you doing? All the extra with whipped cream and sugar laid in bed right now, chilled dough. We had pecan trees growing up almost every day in season. It was me versus the squirrels. Uh, berry season's coming up in Oregon. Strawberries, blackberries, so yummy. Now I really want to make a pie. Never done one. Everything's closed. Next time you get food, if you can, you don't need that many different things to do pie. Um, I mean, look at a couple different recipes, depending on what kind of pie that you want to do. But you can even, like, honestly, if you just want to get started with the very basics. You can buy pie dough that's been pre-made and pre-rolled, and that's much easier for, for just getting started. And then you can either make your own filling, or if you really want to cheat the first time around, which I would not, will never judge anybody for, because you're just trying to get your foot in the door, you can also buy pie filling, like in cans. Um, you can make a perfectly good pie with a pre-made pie dough and a pre-made pie filling, and you just combine them and bake them, and then say, hey, I made a pie. Um, it's not, you know, you're probably not gonna win a county fair with it, but if you've never made a pie before, it could be a place to start. Okay, I am so out of breath. I don't know what it is about standing up and talking, but I'm just not cut out for it. I'm so used to sitting down and talking. Mm. Closet is finished, now the desk. The stream is making me so productive, also really hungry. I got, a, I, got, I got some of that to do today myself. All right, here is pot, here is stove. I'm going to put the berries in it first because everything else I'm going to adjust based on how many berries. They're calling for seven cups which is about two and a third cups of each berry. So I'm just gonna measure, I'm feeling like five cups, cause it's gonna cook down some, I think is the idea. Uh, AFCB89, thank you very much for the brand new sub. And Kravitz, thanks for the sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad guys. So yeah, it looks like a big bag, but I have this left and I have this left and these are my triple berry mix. So I may have to mix in some other stuff. We're gonna see how much we have here um, and then Two extras, just two blueberries there. So I'll see how much I have. And then I still think this is probably enough for the pie, but it's definitely not seven cups worth. So there's one, two, call it two and a half. Something I have noticed in my life is that, so when I'm making my oats in the morning, I make them in the microwave. They're not quick cook, cook oats. So I'll do them for five minutes on half power so it kind of turns on and off for a while. And I'll just put frozen berries right in there with them so that when they come out, the berries are cooked. Let me tell my story after I finish counting, hang on. So that was like, what, two and a half? Let's call that three and a half. Ah, four. Oh no. You know what, we're just putting them all in. Um, we're gonna wing it. <laughs> and like I said, if there's extra, that's fine. 
that's topping for dessert. So let's call that six or so cups. So I'm gonna start with one cup of sugar because they say one cup, but you can use an extra half a cup if you'd like it sweeter. Maybe I'll start with three quarters of a cup. Let's start with three quarters of a cup of sugar. I'm gonna turn this on like medium low so those can start heating up. And here's a quarter of a cup. So we'll start with three quarters of a cup of sugar and then we're just gonna sweeten it to taste. And um, we'll still probably do the full four tablespoons of cornstarch because I don't think that's enough to really turn this into jelly. Um, and I would rather it be a little overly thick than underly thick. So let's just chuck this in on top. One, two, three. And this can just like chill here for later. And uh, we'll put that on full medium. Let's see. Oh man, uh, do you not do it by kilogram? I'm doing it by the earth spirits now. <laughs> I'm, I'm following neither metric nor imperial measurements. Uh, I'm following my heart, which is definitely not a metric or imperial. I uh, made thin pancakes, something very popular in Eastern Europe. Linz. Oh, that sounds kind of good. Hazel, after your cloak is 500, is there a point to do major minor assaults? Mm, so you're going to get rep from the assaults. Um, so if you still need your Rajani or... Oldham Accord rep for anything. Maybe you want the pets. Maybe you want the augment rune. If there's anything you want the rep for, you could continue doing them for rep. Mm, if you don't have all of your essences yet and you have other essences you've already unlocked, then you could be getting Echoes of Nyloffa for alternate essences, but maybe if it's your main, probably not. Mm, and then if you want anything for Corrupted Mementos, such as the there's a, the Wicked Swarmer mount for 100,000 mementos. If you want that, then you're probably going to want to continue running Horrific Visions, which means you're going to want to continue farming the Coalescing Visions. Uh, Cinetaris, thank you for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Girl Squad. Just put chocolate brownies in the oven. Bacon Buddies, how's it going? I think it's pretty good. What else do I need to do to this filling? They want me to add lemon juice. Um, one tablespoon of lemon juice. Berry, sugar, and lemon juice. Okay, so I'll add a tablespoon of lemon juice. Um, I am deeply sorry because I don't have an actual lemon. All I have is this stuff with a bottle that looks like a lemon on top, and I know it's not very good, but we're just living our lives. It's fine. Um, one tablespoon. As this heats up, it should get more liquidy. I'm a little afraid that I'm going to burn the berries in the bottom before everything else has a chance to melt and create liquid, because it's just kind of like a bunch of dry berries and sugar right now. Hopefully the lemon juice will help even that out. So we're going for a tablespoon of this. Approximately. I feel like a good cook if I can pull off microwave ramen. Uh, continue horrific visions for sockets, increase corruption resistance in the cloak. So that is an argument. You can say that, and that is true. If you continue horrific visions, you will continue to upgrade your cloak's um, resistance, and you can earn mementos. At 20,000 mementos, you can buy a socket to add to your gear. However, I would say that for 85% of players, if you're done raiding, you don't really need that, and it's an awful lot of work. I don't think it's really going to change your life to continue doing, like, your five visions a week um, if you're done with, like, any progression. Aren't you growing lemons? Oh, yeah, but that's going to... I'm like... We may or may not ever get lemons from those, and even if we do, we're probably three to five years out from the trees actually bearing fruit. They don't start spitting out fruit very quick. I need a spoon. The lemon trees are doing okay, though. They're, like, this, this tall? This tall? Um, they're putting on some new growth. They seem happy outside. They've transitioned just fine. Look at this. It looks like a Christmas decoration. It's like snowy berries. <laughs> okay, so that's going to heat up. Um, once it is warm and juicy, then I'm going to spoon out some of the juice, add some cornstarch, and mix it back in to thicken. And then while it's cooling, after we've thickened it, they want me to let it cool for 15 minutes um, after removing it from heat and stirring in some butter and then pour it into the pie shell. They say unbaked pie shell. They really don't want me to bake this pie shell first. I guess I could live my life like that. I don't know. It sounds like less work. <laughs> you have a boyfriend? Yeah, I am super married. Uh, glad to hear the lemon plants are doing well. It's odd to me how different they are. I guess I have no reason to believe that the lemon seeds were from the same batch. And also, lemon seeds are not something that will genetically grow true to the parent plant. So it's kind of a genetic lemon lottery to see what kind of plant is going to grow from seeds. Because this is not how people make lemon trees. 
Uh, you make lemon trees by grafting a piece of a lemon tree onto a rootstock, and then that's your lemon tree. You don't really grow them from seed, but it sounded like fun. Uh, come back to WoW, no clue what horrific visions are. What do you get from them, how to do them? WoW head has a write-up that has all the information on it because there's a lot to know. Essentially, it's a single player mode that you can play. Well, one to five players, but you can do it by yourself. And you can get a bunch of stuff from it. <laughs> and in order to do it, you need to use a currency to get entries. Uh, stuff that you can get from it includes ranking up your cloak so that you can wear more corrupted gear and be more powerful. You can get, um, there's pets and mounts that you can get from it, there's a title, and there's varying levels of difficulty that you can, you can, you can continue progressing through different levels of difficulty in this mode. Hazel, do you know what parsing is? Even after someone explained it to me, I still don't know what it is. So, I will tell you my understanding of it, which may not be technically correct, but usually if somebody's talking about how they parsed, um, or asking, or, you know, talking about how they parsed on something. That is talking about how they performed on a fight as evidenced by some kind of a combat log. So, for example, when I, um, I can do a raid, I can go as a Shadow Priest, clear a raid, and somebody will be logging that raid. Um, it could be me. And then there's a site called Warcraft Logs that will show you detailed data that breaks down how that fight went, how much damage everybody did, how well everybody performed, who, who, who interrupted what, how much damage people took from various abilities, lots and lots and lots of data. So a parse, um, you know, the way people tend to use it, is about how well you did on that fight, usually in terms of your damage ranking, compared to other players that have also done that fight. So people will talk about different colors of parses, orange parses and gray parses and green parses. Those refer to different rankings basically a percentile score. So if you've ever done a, a, a test at school and you're like 97th percentile, you're in the A rating, or maybe, you, maybe you're in the 65th percentile. Um, it's, not about how, it's not about how well you did on the test, it's about how well you did on the test compared to other people that also took the test, right? Um, so people talk about a really good parse being they performed in the top percentiles for that fight, meaning they did a lot of damage. Um, for c compared to other players that have a similar item level to them typically that are playing the same class and spec or class anyways. That's my understanding of it. Um, I'm probably wrong <laughs> in some level. There's probably some technicalities of it that I've misexplained. But usually when you talk about parsing, it means like if you wanted a good parse, it means you performed really well on that particular instance of that fight um, and you have a record to show how well you did. Oh man, white balance on the camera is green. I mean, my kitchen is a little bit green. But yeah, white balance is tough to get in here because the lighting in this kitchen is unlike any lighting I have anywhere else in the house. It's very, very orange. So I have, I have my white balance set to um, offset that somewhat. If I turn off the orange light from over here, it becomes a little bit more natural in color, but I'm also a spooky lady that's cooking in her kitchen in the dark. Um, this is a much more flattering lighting because it's coming from the windows, it's natural light, and I'm not top lit, which makes my hair look less frizzy. However, it makes my kitchen super, super dark. So what do you do? One day I will have a house where I can design my own lighting set up for my kitchen. Break something down into parts. The way WoW users use parsing is kind of a misnomer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like spooky baking lady, October themed spooky baking stream. Well, I also should probably be able to like see what I'm doing <laughs> to some extent. Um, let's see if this is getting juicy. I guess I'll turn it up a little bit. We have some steam coming off the bottom of the pan. We have some amount of juice showing up on the bottom of the pan. Oh, you know what? This is actually, it's a little juicy in the bottom. I'll give it a good stir. So am I adding anything else to that? Once I take it off the heat, we're adding butter and we'll do the whole cornstarch thing. They want me to separate out like, what was it? A half a cup of juice? Do I need a half a cup of juice? I could probably do it in a quarter cup. Yeah, they say spoon out about a half a cup of juice. It probably doesn't really matter. Um, we can do that into that little liquid measure if I have it still. Here it is. Not seeing what you're doing is half the fun of spooky baking. I have terrible eyesight. Everything I do is spooky. Are you Canadian? I am. I am from uh, Vancouver Island, British Columbia. <laughs> super Canadian. I don't know if I'm allowed to call myself super Canadian anymore because I don't live in Canada anymore. I immigrated in 2015, 2014, somewhere around there. Um, so I've been here for five-ish five years. Some candles, pumpkins, have a party, baking online Halloween party. I know, I don't really get super into Halloween. I feel like that's a fun thing to do on stream. I like watching other streamers like have Halloween costumes and decorate and stuff. 
I've just always been supremely lazy. <laughs> I put lights up in my office for Christmas time, like for like around December, I'll put up like colored lights over my shelf. And that's as much as I've ever celebrated anything. <laughs> I will maybe put a dress on for my birthday. That's about it. Uh, Canadian enough, people can tell you're Canadian. I think you're good. The funny thing is that when I go to Canada now, people will ask me if I'm American because apparently I've either been Americanized or I just always sounded a little American because people used to ask me that before I moved. Um, so <laughs> I'd fit in nowhere. Nobody, nobody claims this. <sighs> Out of curiosity, do you have a job outside of WoW and YouTube? I do not. Um, I considered streaming on Twitch and then YouTube to be kind of the same thing and that's the only thing that I do. I am not American. I am a permanent resident of America. So I'm a green card holder, but I am not a citizen. It means that I can live here, but I can't vote. <laughs> or like, get yeah, benefits. Uh, oh, this is starting <coughs> to get warm. There we are. So I still don't think I can spoon any juice out of that just yet. A thought that I started while I was measuring fruit that I then stopped having was that I think blueberries hold a lot more water than the rest of those fruits relative to their volume. Based on my experiments with microwaving different types of fruit in with my oats, I find it gets much more liquidy when I do pure blueberries as opposed to blueberries mixed in with raspberries and blackberries. So I wonder how that's going to affect things. I guess it's, I didn't add any extra blueberries. <laughs> well, we know it's a birthday stream by the dress then. I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys if it's my birthday. Um, it's also not a secret, my birthday's in September. I'm going to be 28 years old in September. Topic of jobs, what does your husband do? He has an office job, although I suppose it's less of an office job and more of a work from home job now. Uh, BC accent isn't super knucky until you get some Mario's or pastas in Mario. How, what, what, what do you mean? Mm. Unless you're talking, unless people say Mario. I feel like I've seen people say Mario. Uh, people ask where your accent is from, say Stormwind. I feel like you can only claim the Stormwind accent if you greet people with well met. I feel like it has to, it has to be very grounded. Um, it has to be a very grounded and you have to really hit the ends, the ending consonant of your word. What else do Stormwind guards say? Uh, 31 years older than you. I, um, I, I feel like that's not that unusual. I feel like my demographic is pretty wide in age range, age range, but 10's a little older. And I have a non-insignificant portion of people that watch me that are old enough to be my parents, which is the best thing ever if you ask me. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's really nice. I used to be an adventurer like you. Yeah, wrong guards. Uh, fresh blueberries get soupier than frozen. Where do you get the apron? I bought it off of Etsy. More people have asked me if I'm foreign than my green card holding wife. People um, definitely give me a very funny look when I pull out the green card. Um, before I got my learner's permit, um, which does function as ID, I had to use my green card as my photo ID if anybody was IDing me for like alcohol or anything, um, or just for documentation for anything. Like when I went in to get my driver's license process started, they needed to see my green card. And they'll like look at the green card and then they'll look at me and they'll be like, well, you don't look foreign. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> you're, you're not wrong, but. I don't know what you're trying to say to me. <laughs> I don't think anybody means any harm, but people definitely don't expect me to be uh, not from around to these parts. Uh, farewell, traveler. One of those travelers old enough to be your parent. Uh, if you lived in Iron Forge, where would your villa be? If I lived in Iron Forge, I would leave. It's so dark and smoky in there. Mm -mm, I will not live underground. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, I would not live in Iron Forge. I would not live in the Exodar. The Exodar is prettier and spacier, but it's also still indoors. I do not want an indoor city. <laughs> I need open air, and I would prefer it to be fresh air and like some sunshine, you know, now and then. Okay, I think I can spoon out some of this, um, some of this berry stuff. So let's grab the half a cup and see if I can get some liquid out of here. I'm sure it's fine if there's some amount of fruit and seeds going on. I don't think this is going to like really separate into like liquid liquid. How am I supposed to get a half a cup of it? It's like very together still. I guess I could simmer it a little longer. Um, I don't know. I don't want to overcook it. I'm not trying to like annihilate the berry structure. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to put it in here. I'll show you approximately how liquidy we're talking. It's, it's loose. It's got some berries in there, but it's loose. Oh, it smells amazing. And I'm going to not spill this on my shirt because that will stain. I'm going to get 
four tablespoons, maybe like light tablespoons, but still roughly four. Cornstarch in there and then stir it in the mix. Oh, if Taldrassel was still standing, where would you make a treehouse? Mm, outskirts of the city, outskirts of the city. I don't mind a commute to get into places because I feel like I don't go into town very much. So I would prefer to have a little bit more space, a little bit more privacy, a little bit of a quieter, quieter area. I am never somebody that has wanted to live in an urban area. I never want to be downtown. I don't hate the suburbs. I feel they creep me out a little bit if they're too copy paste, but I don't hate them as long as they're quiet because all honestly, all I really need is a place to walk my dog and an internet connection. <laughs> Um, and then I'm, I'm pretty much chill. I, I've never felt like I needed to be close to like where everything's happening. <laughs> um, I don't mind driving an extra like half hour, hour to get into town for special occasions because they only happen like once a year. All right, that's a lot of cornstarch. That should thicken up this pie real good. That is now simmering. I'm gonna turn it down so that we don't blast it too much. <sighs> yeah, we don't wanna smoosh them too much. What American cities do you like most? Oh my goodness, look what I've made. It's, oh, you're never gonna be able to see. I've made, it's like come together into a glob. I've made slime. <laughs> I've made berry slime. Um, I've only been to a few American cities. I've been to Portland, obviously. And then I've been to San Francisco very, very briefly. And then aside from that, I've done California a few times, but I've never like been into LA. Um, I've done Irvine, I've done Anaheim, but those don't really count as like LA, LA. And similarly, I've been to Orlando, but I don't know if I, I, I went there to go to Disney World when I was a teenager, so I don't know if that really counts. I, I feel like I didn't see the city. Um, and I like Portland the best. Oh, I've been to Seattle too. Seattle's fine, I like Seattle. I like Portland better, but I like Seattle. All right, so we're gonna stir this back in. And the key is to get it incorporated evenly so that we don't end up with any weird globiness. We want that completely mixed and uh, not going great. It's a super cute color of pink though. Give this a few. Stir pretty good. You know what? I don't see it anymore. For a second I was worried I was seeing some big globs of my uh, berry paste. <laughs> I was worried that I maybe didn't let it get liquidy enough before I started adding cornstarch. But now I think it's okay. Let's see if we can scrape the rest of this in here. Or at least a little bit more. Maybe nothing that's like too heavy. And then we're gonna simmer this for like three to five minutes. Probably five, I don't see why not. And then um, and then we're gonna take it off the heat to cool and start rolling out our pastry dough. So let's, you know what, I'll set that for four minutes. <sighs> well, kind of Dutch to me. I feel like I'm a fairly nondescript looking face. I have, um, I have part of my family is from, like my Canadian family and both my mom and dad's side are what would you say, second generation immigrants? So my grandparents grew up in Canada, but some of them came from Europe, and then if not, their parents came from Europe. Um, so most of that's just from England, a little bit from France, and then one side of my family is from the Ukraine. But I don't connect with that side of the family all that much. Is it true that Seattle loves its teriyaki? Maybe, I don't know. I'm um, hours from Seattle. It was pretty fun last time I was there. All I really remember about Seattle, and I've been there a few times, um, it has lots of hills. And uh, the Seahawks stadium is very loud whenever there's a Seahawks game. That's all I know. <laughs> That's the end of it. I don't, I don't really, I don't know. I don't really need cities. Ugh. I feel like one day, especially if remote work continues to be possible for both of us, like the power move is to move somewhere that's like pretty far out so that housing is cheaper, but as long as we have a good internet connection and access to like basic amenities like groceries and whatever, I feel like I'd be chill. Um, as long as I can get stuff shipped to me, it's fine. Oh man, uh, everyone tells me I look French, but I'm fourth generation Austrian. Seattle's infested with vampires, I see. She moved to Washington. If I was gonna move to a different state, it would probably be Washington. I don't think I would really leave the Pacific Northwest. Um, I, I, would, I would love to live my entire life just between BC, Portland, or Oregon, and then Washington. Um, Portland doesn't have any sales tax, but Washington's a little bit closer to, to the border. Uh, can you speak any languages besides English? No, not really. I studied French in high school, and then I studied Korean for a little bit independently as an adult, but I didn't really learn either of them. So I, I can't say that I'm multilingual at all. Ooh, that's thickening up pretty good. Ooh, all right. 
I'm going to take that off the heat. I couldn't tell if there was like a hair in it or if that's just a strand. Oh, no, that is my hair. I pulled my hair back. Hang on. I'm going to go pull my hair back more. <laughs> There's a reason why uh, I don't share the food that I make because I am not a uh, food safe certified kitchen over here. Where are my hair ties? Do I have hair ties in here? No, I have hair clips in there. I feel like they always, there's like a, a flow of hair ties through my home where the places that they come off are never the places they go on. And I have yet to close the loop of the hair ties. So I think they end up by my desk. I feel like I take them out when I'm at my desk, but I never put them in at my desk. Okay, I found one. I'll be back with you shortly. I wonder how the range of this microphone is doing. I imagine that through doors, it's probably messing up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna take this one out and then uh, we're going to get a bun going on over here. At this point, it might be too late, but, you know, <laughs> worth an effort. Okay. How are you guys doing? Uh, <laughs> Off-screen Hazel, spooky. Mike's doing quite well. Good. I'm proud of this microphone. I went through a lot of microphones before I landed on this one, and this one was, like, stupid expensive. So I'm glad that it works. <laughs> That's all I really want. Oh man, bugs and hair. Oh my, you cook like me. I don't anymore though. I, yeah. I, I, I wish I didn't. And usually I'm not, I'm not like a horribly messy person, but I guess sometimes at home things happen. Supernova, thank you for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Cheese sauce on broccoli, yes or no? Oh, for me, 100% yes, yeah. For a while I would do mac and cheese almost every weekend and I would justify eating that much mac and cheese by putting stir fried or steamed broccoli in it because it just goes nicely with the cheese sauce and then adds some kind of vegetable. Okay, I am tasting this because I need to know if I need to sweeten it more actually. I forgot to try it. So I'm gonna get a little bit of it and then I'm gonna like wait because that's like hot sugar so that's gonna hurt. <laughs> so we're just gonna let that chill for a sec. Your timer confused both of my cats. Oh man, uh, vegetarians can eat Anything that isn't meat. Yeah, vegans, um, most of them will avoid animal products altogether, both in and out of food. So they will do things like avoiding leather. Um, they will not eat things like honey or um, gelatin um, and uh, whew, dairy products in addition to your typical meat products. Got to do some homework. Great time on the screen. Have a nice, amazing day. See you later, Michael. That's a good pie. I like that. That's not too sweet. It's a little tart. I'm thinking about sweetening it more, but you know what? If we serve it with ice cream, that's it. That's it. That's good. All right. Uh, I'm going to get the juice off my counter because that's going to stain. Also, I don't think it buys me any Canadian cred, but this is one of the only shirts that I'm ever going to wear where you can see, well, half of my tattoo. <laughs> Nobody ever sees the one on the back because it's on my back. <laughs> I often forget that I have it. That was my first tattoo. I got that when I was like 19, 20 um, in Toronto for the first time and last time, never been back. Okay. Rolling out my pie dough to put into this plate. So I'm going to do this on a dry cutting board. Um, I'm going to flour my cutting board. We're going to roll out the bottom piece, and then we're going to roll out the top piece. Oh, I'm going to preheat my oven, I guess. Also, this should rest not on the heat. So they want me to... Oh, I'm supposed to stir in some butter. They want me to add two tablespoons of butter. I could do that. Um, let me grab half of this. If I can find my knife again. There we are. It's very Canadian. Yeah, when I went on that trip to Toronto, I already knew that there was a strong chance that I was going to leave Canada and move to the States, and I was feeling very melancholy about the whole thing. <laughs> so I told the tattoo artist, it was like a walk-in appointment. Um, I told the tattoo artist I wanted something to, a way to bring a little bit of Canada with me when I left. Uh, I'm just chucking in that chunk of butter. You'll melt, you'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, that logic has gotten me into trouble before. I often um, trust that butter will melt and then we'll be eating some dessert I've made and we'll just unearth pieces of butter and be like, huh, <laughs> turns out that didn't melt. Um, 
again. All right, I am grabbing my flour container again because I'm gonna need like an extra scoop of flour to use on my hands and on my rolling pin. Uh, I'm gonna need a scoop. I've used all my measuring cups somehow. Okay. Uh, very tidy. Mm, I don't know if you would agree with that if you could see my entire place. I am a very messy person living in a very tidy person's brain. I haven't always been very tidy. <laughs> I was chaotically messy as a child. And then as I get older, I think once I hit sort of 23, 24, I started to want to be tidier and that part has grown over time. But it's like the two halves of me at war with myself. I'm not naturally, well, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't always been tidy, but I aspire to be tidy. That's what I think I'm trying to say. I would like to be tidy when I grow up, so I try very hard. Okay. It's, uh, I feel like just a good, it's kind of therapeutic. I feel like it's a good first place to start when you feel like everything's kind of a mess and you don't know what to do in your life, um, or at least in my life when I felt like that. I found that if I can just like clean something up, <laughs> then I, it's something concrete that I'm doing. And then I feel like I can, I can think a little bit better in a clean space, which puts me better at, better, better prepares me to tackle whatever it is that I was stressed about. Although clearly I don't clean that much because there was definitely a bug in that pie plate. Okay, I am going to roll out the first one of these. I'll leave the second one in the freezer for now. This isn't frozen, it's just cold, so that's probably good. Uh, I'm gonna take my ring off for now and I'm gonna put it over here and I'm gonna forget about that later and it's gonna bother me. And flour. So one thing I don't know is how using whole wheat flour is going to really affect the way that this pie crust comes together because it's definitely a little grainier. It's not quite as soft. So I wonder if maybe it will need more water. This doesn't seem like it's gonna roll out very well. <laughs> Feels like it's gonna be a little too dry. We'll see. I don't want to, I don't want to torture it too much. I just need it to come together. I don't want to like ruin it, right? Cause you don't want it to be tough. So if you could just pretty please, I guess I'll get a little dish of water so that I can like dip my fingers in when needed. That sounds like a good idea. Hard to be tidy with an eight month baby and a three year old, I bet. I, I struggle with no children and just a cat and a dog. And honestly, they're not even that messy of a cat and dog. So I, I would be an absolute mess if I was picking up after human beings. Okay. So I'm just gonna get my fingers a little wet. Uh, the reason I dumped that out was because it was warm water the first time and we definitely don't want that. So it's like not sticking together in one part and the other part's sticking to the thing. I want to more evenly incorporate my moisture. Mm. Mm. This may be a difficulty of having used whole wheat flour. I imagine that whole wheat pie crust is not an innately easy thing to work with. So perhaps that's part of where my difficulties are coming from. It's kind of getting there. I also, I don't need it to be a gorgeous pie crust. I will often kind of piecemeal patch together something like this because I would rather um, have it look a little shoddy than have it be super overworked because I like re-rolled it 70 times. So we'll, we'll make patchwork as we need to. Um. Ah, a piece flew. I'll have to get that so the dog doesn't need it. Although he seems to be occupied elsewhere. Okay, um, so I'm thinking what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pick up the rogue dough and then wash my hands. When I bake anything, flour and ingredients everywhere. Everything's nice and neat and clean here. Mm, I think the counter print definitely, um, the counter print definitely masks some of the mess. There's definitely, I'm gonna need to wipe down the counters. I do like to put things away and do dishes as I go though, because otherwise when I run out of space, I start making more mistakes. I like to be able to see stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just like slap that onto the plate 
trim off the excess and then use the trimmings to kind of patch it together. Um, they don't want me to grease the plate. You don't grease pie plates, do you? No, unbaked pie shell in a nine inch pan. So we're just gonna kind of ease, ease our, our baby, which is Terry a lot on that one side. We're just gonna like whoosh it over here. I wonder if this is too thick. I'm gonna like press it into the bottom a little bit. It looks like it's mostly just, there's one, there's two parts I'm gonna need to patch. But aside from that, it's not awful. I don't hate it. Uh, and you know what, even if it's weird, I made it. And I made it from scratch and that's something. So I'm gonna trim off, well, trim. <laughs> off um, some of these extra bits and I'm going to roll them out into like a patch for the sides which is now starting to stick to itself okay I'll show you guys my finished product we're going to be adding on a lattice topping or well we're going to try <laughs> so there will be I'll be connecting the edges that way so it doesn't have to look super pretty in the edges as long as there's enough dough there for it to all connect mm. it smells good though I mean it's like butter so obviously <laughs> yeah I don't kind of do maybe this is how I usually do it it's not usually perfect but it's usually pie I don't know if I should be taking notes of things I'd like to try differently next time to improve upon this process, or if I should just write it off as whole wheat pie crust is hard. And uh, I just will try to refine my process with all purpose flour next time. So this is how we're looking. We have it into the bottom of the plate. It is, I don't see any gaps. It goes pretty much up the sides. So now, um, I'm going to preheat the oven for sure. Let's start with 350. They want me to bake the pie at 400. Oh, man. Is this pie all for you? No, I, I get to share with my husband. And once upon a time, we would have sent it into the office, but we can't do that anymore. So we're going to share it just between the two of us. I poured maple syrup all over the corner of my bed. Oh, no. Berries are blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries, I think. That should do a key. See you later. Oh. <sighs> Throw the whole affair to the wash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, transfer it to the rolling pin. Put it back in the dish. Ooh. Eh. I mean, this part's going to be underneath all the pie filling and stuff. I'm deciding whether or not I want to par-bake it. The recipe doesn't want me to, but the recipe also doesn't know anything about my pie crust. I'm not using their crust recipe. Sheets are back. Not learned about change. Yeah. That's good. I would st yeah, I would still whack them through the washing machine if it were me, just because you don't want any... You don't want any stickiness on your sheets <laughs> or like ants, you know. I was allowed to play WoW when I moved out at 16. Parents were draconian, averse to any immersion of the outside world. Oh, are we talking about when people should start WoW? Yeah, um, I was allowed when I was 16. I started playing when I was 16. I was playing online games before that, but I don't know if my parents fully knew the extent to which I was able to talk to strangers with my online gaming and they may not have approved at the time. <laughs> Oh, I should, I should, no, oh, no. I just checked in the butter. I forgot to stir it. I have a, just a big um, pad of melted butter. Let's mix that in, shall we? Oh dear. Well, partially melted butter. Hmm. You know what, I'm gonna, oh no, 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 no. No, no, I cannot par bake the bottom because that makes it really difficult to attach the lattice topped crust. We've been over this. We've done this before. I've lived this life before. <sighs> Well, that solves that problem. Let's roll out the top. Let's uh, scrape all this together. We're gonna roll out some strips for the lattice top. This is going to be a pretty messy lattice top because this stuff does not like to come together, but uh, we'll do our best. <laughs> Grew up playing WoW, started playing WoW when I was 10. Yeah, sometimes I wish that I had started, not necessarily WoW, but gaming earlier. I had um, like the Pokemon on my Game Boy as, as a small kid. But I wasn't playing any, any proper, like, 
real-time games that required reflexes or anything. I didn't play any shooter games as a kid. I didn't grow up playing um, action RPGs or anything like that. So that when I was 16 and like learning how to play WoW, I felt like I was starting off from such... I, I couldn't even like move my character properly. Um, and it took a quite some time to really figure that out. Whereas a lot of people that kind of like grew up playing games had a much easier start than me. Although, you know what I did play as a kid and teenager? <laughs> it's a ton of racing games. I had a copy of Need for Speed Underground for my GameCube. And um, I don't think it was even my copy. I think I borrowed it from a friend and they just never asked for it back. Um, I think I eventually tried to give it back and they didn't have a GameCube anymore. I don't know, something happened. <sighs> I hope I didn't steal that game. <laughs> It was a long time ago. Maybe I stole it. I uh, I had Need for Speed Underground, and I would I would play that by myself um, all the time. Well, not all the time, but a good amount of the time. It was fun. I like decorating my car, and then you know racing. But I never really tried racing games again as an adult. Like the other thing that I played a lot as a kid was um, Clash of Ninja, which was a Naruto-themed Street Fighter clone, and uh, that one. I played that a lot with my friends. I remember one like 48 hour sleepover where we stayed up for like 30 hours in a row <laughs> playing Clash of Ninja. Just the two of us. Um, I was a, I used to play a lot of that, but then I was an adult. I'm like, hey, maybe I grew up on Street Fighter games. Maybe I'll be good at Street Fighter. And I bought Street Fighter and I had no idea what to do. Mind you, I was trying to play with a keyboard and that was a mistake, but I don't think I have any special skill at fighting games for having played them as a kid. Hmm. So the thing that this dough is slightly lacking in is like elasticity. It seems to break before it stretches. It's not all that stretchy, which is causing some issues in trying to roll it out without crushing it too much. However, I am encouraged by the visible presence of butter flakes, which I think are going to make it have a nice texture when baked, as long as I can get it out thin enough without absolutely melting everything. I think it'll be okay. I want, I don't know why I'm so exhausted from just standing up and talking. Maybe I just don't catch my breath often enough when I'm talking. Mm. I want five? One, two, three, four, five is a lot. I used to do 10 strips and do five in each direction, but it's like pretty crowded. But four is just an awkward number and three is not enough. So I guess I'll do 10 strips. <sighs> Racing stream when? Well, I don't think I have any extra talent for them because I then later on in my life played a bunch of um, Mario Kart because who didn't? And I always lose at that. I lose very badly at Mario Kart, so <laughs> I don't know about all that. Uh, so I need 10 equal strips. Um, I usually measure them, but I think I'm just going to freehand because uh, otherwise it won't match the rustic look of my pie. <laughs> I would hate to. I would hate to ruin the rusticity of this. Oh boy. Uh, I, I, oh, thank you very much for the tip, Gotcha Llama. If there was a message, I don't see it. And I can't get to it with, from my kitchen. I'm not very well set up in that regard. I'm gonna start slicing some things, but thank you very much. I will check that. Um, maybe I can find it after I get the pie in the oven. So I'm just gonna go fairly skinny strips. Uh, I used to do an inch wide, but that was like a little too much. One, two, three, two, four, five, seven, eight. Oh, this is gonna be a real problem. Um, hmm. I feel like somebody that started writing, there's like a John Mulaney bit about somebody writing happy birthday in a sign and they make the H and the A huge and then have no room for the rest of it. I feel like that's what I've done. I started cutting my strips without really thinking for the future. This is what happens when you don't measure. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Sure. And then these little stubby ones in the end are going to be the end strips. Um, we'll keep the side bits for uh, for fixing things. Oh no, it's already broken. <laughs> oh dear. Uh oh. Oh dear. Okay. Oh boy. I'm just going to whack this whole thing together. We're just going to figure this all out. Oh, uh, it's okay. I just want to say thanks for being awesome. Aw, thank you. As the pie coming along, just had a guilty run around in the maze for the Lucid Nightmare for two and a half hours. He was too stubborn to keep a map. Did he get it, though? Did he get it? Uh, I like whacking things together. Yeah, so 
One moment, let me see. Oh no, my mouse doesn't work, that's right. I was gonna, I wanna see if I can show you guys on the camera. I have a, a just don't mind me. I'm just gonna click mouse buttons for a second to see if I can figure something out. Wow, that was not that hard. Okay, sure, <laughs> good news. It looks like it's not completely broken. Um, so there you go, there's the counter. Um, this is what we're looking at. You can see strips. Uh, I probably don't need the water anymore. Uh, here is pie shell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna put the whole thing on a big tray because this pie is probably gonna bubble over in the oven because they all do for me. And this just makes it easier for me to both move it in and out of the oven. Um, I, oh, that's not good. All right, well, never mind. Um, <laughs> oh no, now I have to go back to turn it off. <sighs> you know what, I'll leave it on the small screen so that the stop motion webcam can still show you roughly what's happening, but it's not gonna be smooth motion because something's up with that camera. Maybe I need to update the drivers. <sighs> yeah, um, I find that I've, I always put my oven mitts in my soft pie crust whenever I'm putting it in and out of the oven, so having a tray to handle it by seems to help me. So we're going to basically add our pie filling. I'm gonna finish stirring in the butter here. Add the filling, which seems to be nicely thickened, which I wasn't sure about. Um, also, it seems like, oh, uh-oh. Uh, not a bad amount of it either. It's not like wildly too much. I had just the right amount of fruit left over. The problem is that if I ever wanna recreate these exact proportions, I can't because I just kinda of like chucked it all in here. I'm going to wipe up the bit that went on the floor before I stain my socks forever, although who really looks at my socks? Um, often when I'm doing my makeup, I'll be sitting on the floor because space. And uh, I will, um, I will dust off my makeup brush in between colors of eyeshadow just by kind of like wiggling it, wiggling it against the upper part of my sock, not like the bottom of my foot, but like the ankle part of the sock on the outside, I just use that to dust off extra eyeshadow. So I have like really sparkly socks. All right. Yeah, no, this, both of my webcams have been having problems and I was hoping that it was partly due to the, I was hoping that it was due to the, um, uh, shoot, the cable, the extension cable I had been using However, I'm not using an extension cable right now and it's still happening, so that's a bummer. At least it's not the main camera because that one costs a lot more money. Uh, uh, Mr. Stocktopus, thank you very much for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Scroll Squad. Mr. Stocktopus. Oh, 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 uh, four. So we're doing five across and then five the other way. And then this one's just like a little baby one. Well, so now what we do is we're going to fold back half of them. I'm doing this in the worst possible angle for you, but it's fine, you can't see anyways. Well, this one's broken, so I can't fold him back. These are too brittle. I'm gonna break them if I try to fold them back. I'm just gonna do a lattice that's not latticed. <laughs> I'm gonna do a ladder, and that's just gonna have to be fine, okay? It's, a, it's, a, it's no longer a nicely latticed pie. It's now just a fence. And that's fine because I feel like I was about to make that a lot worse because these are really brittle. Um, I feel like the whole wheat's made them pretty brittle. So we're just going to lay that on top and it's all going to be fine. Uh, okay, it doesn't look cute yet, but um, don't worry. I bet you people have done lattice like this by accident because they didn't know about the, the, how to weave them. I definitely messed my first one up. Um, so I'm just doing it on purpose. I'm making it a thing. I'm holding it out for all of the first time latticers of the world. I'm gonna like kind of cap some of these edges, some of the skinny edges with some of this dough. Make like kind of more of a ridge here to hold it all together. Um, I'm gonna bake it for half of the time at uncovered and then eh, maybe about 20 minutes in it. It's got a 40 minute baking time. 
Um, so I'm going to start it uncovered because I have quite a bit of dough going on on the ridges here. So I want to make sure that gets like cooked, but I also don't want to burn it. So I'm going to put that pie shield on about halfway through the bake time. Okay. So this is like the biggest transgression is whatever's happening over here. So I'm just going to like set that on top and hope it all melts. <laughs> all right. Well, you know what? It's, it's, it's kind of cute. <laughs> Um, I can't tilt it without dumping it on the floor, so you're just going to have to trust that it looks like a pie. I'm slapping this in the oven. No, I'm not. The oven's only at 350, and it needs to be on 400. Awkward. I put it to 350 when I thought I was going to power bake it, and then I changed my mind. Oh, your fence pie is going to be amazing. Mail me some of that pie for the channel, please. Um, beautiful even without makeup. That's very sweet of you. However, I must confess I am wearing a lot of makeup. <laughs> I am wearing about seven different types of makeup right now. Uh, looks good. Tilt it down once time. Fate of the Nightborn? I'm not sure how you get to that one. I was digging around today lost looking for a quest pickup for a while. I got my Shadow Barb drone, so I'm done with that mount grind. And I'm like, there's other dailies in BFA that I need to do to get mounts. Um, I never did the Child of Torcali and I never did Quaffon. So I got on a Horde character and I'm like, I'm going to do Torcali <coughs> first because it looks easier. <laughs> and I only want to do one at a time. Um, two at a time would make more sense because they're dailies, but whatever, don't fight me. <sighs> and I like, I knew I had done some of the initial quest line for the How to Train Your Direhorn thing, but I like couldn't figure out where the rest of it was. I eventually got there, but I had to like really do laps. Uh, floor pie is the best pie. Quaffon's my baby. How annoying do you guys feel the Coafon egg farming thing is? I was reading Wowhead comments and some people made it sound not so bad and some people made it sound awful. <laughs> uh, minimum item level. There's no minimum item level for Uncorrupted Voidwing. It just depends on getting you into a group. So different pugs will have different item level thresholds for what they will allow in their group. And then it also depends on whether or not you're playing something they need. Whereas carry groups often won't require an item level because they want to insta kill you. Um, at the beginning of the fight so that you don't mess up any mechanics for them. And those are carries typically that you'll pay for with gold. <sighs> got mine 20 kills, got mine in 10 kills. Well, that doesn't sound like what I know. It took me four days of grinding. It's so terrible, the what farm. So there's a Teradax egg. I'm not sure the exact name of it off the top of my head, but there's an item that drops in Zandalar for Horde characters that starts the How to Train Your Teradax quest line for the Flying Teradax Quaffon mount. Um, and you have to farm the rare item first. Yeah, quest to drop for that one, yeah. I do have the B mount. I do, I do get the B mount. Can't get into a group for the Void Wing. You need to have the Void Wing to get the Void Wing on my server. Yeah, it's tough to find groups that aren't asking for ahead of the curve. Um, I don't really have any useful advice on that one. That's just, that's just hard. You can try starting your own group and, uh, and that's the only thing you can really, that's the only other, other option you can really do. At the beginning of BFA, it was shareable, so I got it with zero effort, but still haven't finished it. Uh, trying to get them out for months, hasn't dropped the item for me yet. Barely just unlocked flying and mechanomes. There are so many mounts you can get out of BFA content. Wowhead has a big page right up of all of the various mounts between like the world drop mounts and the quest mounts and the achievement mounts and the rare drop mounts. And there are so many different mounts. I don't like, I collect mounts and I still think I'm missing probably like a solid third of them. Um, so that is now preheated. Maybe? It's going in there for 40 minutes. It'll figure its life out. Um, there's like crumbs on this pan. And you know, the pan is designed to get trashed usually, but I'm still gonna wipe it down a little bit. <laughs> Even though it's probably gonna get berry juice boiled over onto it. We'll see. We're gonna do this. And then throw this in the oven carefully. And I'm gonna do 20 minutes and then check the top of it, add a pie shield, and then do the remaining 20 minutes. Okay. Took me about two hours for the egg. I imagine it's probably a little easier to do these days. With, um, probably a little easier to do these days. It's a little warm in here. I wonder if turning off the light will help. I guess it's the oven making it warm. I'm still gonna do like this. There's enough sunlight, you can see me. I'm going to, because these days you can, um, you know, you've got much higher damage, right? So you can farm more efficiently. That seems like it would help. I have all this extra dough, but I don't think it's really worth saving. 
it's already kind of like been warmed and you know, we got a whole pie out of it. <laughs> Why did I have so much extra dough? Are all of my recipes just for a deep dish pie crust? I'm tilted because I thought that's what I was buying. I didn't inspect the item I was purchasing closely enough. I should have just bought it in a store. <laughs> I really have no use for a regular depth pie dish. When will you choose that over a deep dish pie dish? All right, I have so, oh, I should probably put gloves on. I painted my nails yesterday. Um, I decided I really, really hated the pink purple stripe thing I had going on. So I, I put a gradient on them. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but it's like, it just looks purple, but they're like gray into purple. And I'm like really happy with them, despite the fact that I got polished like halfway to my wrists. <laughs> but I've never done a gradient nail before. And I like them a lot. So I should not get them wet by doing dishes. I should probably wear the gloves. Uh, I'm looking for a night hold. I don't know. Roll it in sugar and bake it. Ah, it's too late now. Uh, they look great. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I like, I, I don't know, I, I enjoy it. It takes a while and it smells horrible whenever you're working on your nails. And I have a tendency to get nail polish everywhere. I get it like, I'll do my nails at my desk, so I'll get it on my um, keyboard and my mouse and like desk mat and stuff. It's just that before I started playing WoW, I was awful at painting my nails because I would never be patient enough to let it fully dry. So I would invariably damage my wet nail polish um, by starting to live my life again too soon. Whereas when I'm playing WoW, I found that gaming on the PC spreads my fingers out enough that unless I'm doing something really weird, my nails can dry without me damaging them. So I will typically paint my nails over the course of like an hour or two while I'm playing WoW so that I can like give them enough time to dry between coats. And that lends itself nicely to doing stuff that has like a bunch of different steps. Pastel Void Elf. Really good with pie dough, sprinkle leftovers with cinnamon sugar mix, bake 350 for a few minutes. Ooh, kind of sounds like a churros. Or um, my pizza place does this cinnamon sugar pizza bread twist thing that I've never ordered because usually I just want regular breadsticks, but it sounds kind of like that. Dishwashing gloves good for keeping everyone's hands from being too dry. Hey. People, not lately, um, but in my life have given me a hard time for the dish gloves. I've had like roommates or people on stream that think the dish gloves look silly <laughs> and I don't really understand the dish glove hate like I, I get that if you don't want to use them um, then that's fine some people want to feel the dishes with their hands so that they can tell if they're clean that way but uh, <laughs> I don't know I like them do you think that they're gonna add more cosmetic hairstyles to allied races one day yes Shadowlands probably not um, I imagine that they're going to be concentrating the bulk of their customization making forces on original and then blood elf draenei races and i guess goblins are getting them too so they're going up to the newer ones but allied races i think are recent enough that they're probably not going to get hit with the makeovers <sighs> which i think is going to kind of like for a while i've kind of felt that if i'm making an alt allied racer bust right like i've been making a bunch of characters and i will always find it's not a question of what race to make it it's a question of what allied race to make it so having some new life breathed into the original ones, oh, it's warm, um, seems like a good idea. I'm actually really interested in potentially playing human priest for Shadowlands. I feel like gross washing dishes without gloves, totally understand. I just love gloves for cleaning stuff. I can't, it was such a weirdly easy fix. Like as a kid, I hated cleaning. I, like, I managed to scurry my way out of cleaning the bathrooms until I was a young adult. I never cleaned a bathroom growing up because our family would split chores. So I would vacuum and I would dust, but then somebody else would always do the bathrooms and I was secretly really glad because I thought that was very gross. <laughs> and then I got a job where I had to clean a bathroom and I'm like, oh no, I don't know how. So my poor coworker was like, how on earth do you not know this yet? And showed me. And I realized, oh wait, I can wear gloves so I don't have to touch anything gross. And then it's not that big of a deal. And I never thought something as easy as wearing gloves would change how I approach housekeeping and <laughs> general cleanliness philosophy, but I'll put on gloves for all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't mind cleaning up gross things as long as I'm allowed to wear gloves. Do you prefer pie for birthdays? What's your favorite flavor? Um, I usually make, well, we don't, for birthdays, I'll usually just make a cake, I guess, because husband and I have birthdays very close together. So I'll just bake one thing and then we'll call that good for both of us. Um, I, maybe I've done birthday pies before. Favorite pie is hard to choose, actually. I really like um, 
cherry pine is a favorite of mine, but I also haven't met that many pies that I don't like. <laughs> I guess I, the really like artificial like chocolate pudding pies, I don't hate them, but I don't really understand them. I didn't have them growing up, so I don't have any nostalgia for them, and they just seem a little bit odd to me. I'm usually going for like a fruit pie. Um, like lemon pies are really nice. <sighs> All pies are the best. Uh, what berries are we using? So there are raspberries, blackberries, and blueberries in that pie, in that oven. Um, I should warn you guys that you are probably not going to see the pie come out of the oven. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna be in there for like a while and then we can't cut it when it comes out it's got a set so what I'll usually do is um, I will have a piece of it on the stream tomorrow and then if I remember I will tweet some pictures um, of how it turns out but we can we can check in with it tomorrow Hazel should not clean poop I mean I have a dog <laughs> and also a cat you know it needs to be done their, their places must be clean I think it's really funny um, our litter box is in this is only a vaguely gross story, it's fine. <laughs> Our litter box is in the bathroom. And um, we only have the one bathroom in the place, so typically if I'm in there, I will close the door. And I went in there last night to like take off my makeup and get ready for bed. And I was closing the door and the cat comes like hurtling out of the bedroom and darts into the bathroom like she wanted to get in there before I closed the door. <laughs> so I, I, gave her, I gave her a few minutes because clearly it was urgent. It was just such a people thing to do that I thought it was really funny. But yeah, I don't think you really need to directly touch poop for a lot of things. Um, there's gloves, there's also dog bags for the dog, and then for the cat, there's like a scoop for the litter box. Like, nobody's grabbing that stuff with their hands. Uh, Adoration, thank you very much for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Now I want to bake something. In spite of the animal dropping stock. <laughs> it is kind of fun, although I am very warm right now. Oh, that's part of the re- well. Most of the reason why I turned the light off is because I feel like the, the color balance is much better without it. So even though it makes the kitchen super dark, um, I look better. And I'm a vain thing. Uh, litter box in the bathroom as well. It's like the, one of the only places, we don't have that many places in our apartment that are not carpet. Most of our place is carpet. Um, and I didn't really, I mean, I guess you can get a mat for it, but it just makes more sense to confine it there. And then we have a flushable litter that is compatible with our sewage system, so we are able to just scoop directly into the toilet and flush it, and then that's gone. Oh, man. Uh, is the level squish, is it worth paying for improved heirlooms? Eh, I wouldn't if you're really worried about the gold for it. We're going to be able to use them, and it'll make them scale a little bit farther, but like the extra level difference means it's not going to be scaling that much farther. Um, so it will be usable not a complete waste of gold but it's also oh wow there's a lot of dough in this counter um not a complete waste of gold but it's also not like strictly necessary saturday is my apartment cleaning day so even if i get some on the floor i'll get it off later i think i'm gonna mop i i had i've had like a slippery film on my floor ever since i used that hairspray maybe i'll just do it in the bathtub next time i don't know that's just gonna make the bathtub really dangerous um i think i need to like mop my floors it is spooky cleaning time um, I guess I should turn the fan on a little bit. Mm. I would make some tea, but I feel like hot tea would be just too warm today. And uh, iced tea is something I feel like I need to make in advance. I get very irritated trying to chill a pot of tea that is hot. It just feels like so much extra effort. <laughs> you know, you can leave it out for a while, I guess. But then you still have to wait a while, and if you just cold brew it overnight, it comes in much nicer. Don't fall. Yeah, I'm trying not to. The foot's a little sore. It's fine. Um, it, o it only hurts when you rotate it, but it's definitely not, like, perfect, so I need to not, like, trip and fall. Motivating me to get organized. Finally got my bedroom done. Now the rest of the house. Yeah, it's definitely a project sometimes. <sighs> I'm going to do some of my cupboards today, I think, especially if there's, like, little bug, bug, bug woods in them. Cold warm tea is not as good as straight cold tea. Yeah. I haven't cold brewed tea very often lately because usually cold brewed coffee, I feel like just drinks a little bit nicer. Um, cold brewed tea is nice if you make milk tea out of it. And for that, I'll like make some boba and then I'll like mix in some like syrup and whatever, but it's just like a lot of work. I don't know. Must do homework, fun to watch, enjoy your pie. Thanks. Uh, what do you think about Brewmaster Monk? Very fun, very good tank, generally speaking. 
Um, lots of lots of good <laughs> utility to them. They they do pretty well. Uh, a little hard for me. <laughs> and I'm not saying they're hard, but compared to some other tanks, the brew managing play style just feels a little different from the way other tanks do. You have to kind of balance. There's the game that you play of balancing your. You want to maintain um, your whatever they call it brew iron skin or whatever the stagger one all the time but then you also want to like preserve stacks of it so that you can use it to clear off high amounts of um, stagger so there's a little bit more gameplay to it than something like the guardian Road where you're like iron fur <laughs> oh man how do you cold brew tea i can show you so you start with a um you want to be able to suspend your tea leaves in the solution you could put them just in there loose and then strain them out later but what I have, if I have any idea where I keep it these days, maybe in here? Yeah, um, I have these things. So I have two, this one is for coffee, this one is for tea, but they're essentially the same thing. Um, it's basically a pitcher that has a basket that screws onto this part that is somewhere. Why did I not store them in the same place? Uh, nope, not that. Nope, not that. Nope, those are noodles. What's this? Ooh, hot chocolate. Um, all right, I don't know where I kept it. <laughs> Clearly I'm not that organized. <sighs> but yeah, there's a basket that screws onto the top of it so that you put your tea or coffee in the basket and then you put the water in it, just like tap water is fine, cold water, drinking water, whatever you drink. And then you keep it in the fridge overnight, leave it for like 12 to 20 hours. And then when you take it out, you got some cold brewed coffee or tea. It's very easy. <laughs> does not, does not uh, take much doing, and it tends to come out less bitter than a hot brewed coffee or tea. Um, I know for tea it has to do with the, the way that hot steeping brings out tannins. Um, for coffee, I have no idea. <sighs> Where do you get one of those? Uh, I got both of mine from Amazon. I got both of mine from Amazon. If you look for like a cold brew pitcher or carafe, you'll find something like that. Um, also, I imagine most places that sell like Kitchen supplies? I'm gonna wash that. <laughs> I'm gonna wash both of them. <laughs> I need to do a real thorough version of my cupboards, or a cleaning of my cupboards. Um, I think, so about seven minutes. Let me take a look at the top of it. Mm. I wanna wait until the edges look a little bit cooked and even starting to brown a little bit before I put the pie shield on because they're pretty thick around the edge, so I definitely don't want to, um, it's pretty thick around the edge, so I don't want to make it undercooked at all. I just want it to be um, also not burnt around the edge, because it's going to stay in there for like 40 minutes. Secret playing brewmaster is not to admit that I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh boy, um, I think that I am going to wrap up for today. The VOD of the stream will hit YouTube probably next Sunday. There's a new Saturday vlog, a new news video that went out just this morning, so check that out if you haven't seen it yet. We talk a little bit about the tour gas timer situation and answer some questions. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. Tomorrow morning I will be back with another WoW stream and we will try the pie on tomorrow's stream. And I will also do my best to tweet a picture or two of the pie once it comes out and is ready to be sliced. So uh, Twitter's hazelnutty games, I don't know, who cares. Uh, thank you all very much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Oh, this mouse doesn't work. Awkward. <laughs> I caught a bird in the act of trying to get to your flowers. I'm still screaming. <laughs>